I don't like flighty Cybermen head probe oh, thing. Oh, see, I like that. That I was just quite slightly like mental. You know, the idea that I want Cybermen. Cybermen. That's it was what the I handles want. kind of going through the air like... Ah. Yeah. No. No? I'm not as convinced by New Master. I like Delgado. He has a he has a kind of presence, like he knows what he's doing. Whereas I think the the new Master is is he's frenetic, but without direction almost. But yeah, I think that's where the madness is. But yeah, he's also quite good looking. <laughs> Sasha Duran is my favorite master. I don't care. He is my favorite. Like honestly, I've it's only been for a. Technically three, but we'll say we'll say four. It's only been four episodes, but honestly, like he's just so good. Like he's just so like menacing, and like he he's like he gets the master for me. He's better looking than the Gado master uh-huh. and some master. I'm in love with him. I mean, yeah. he, he, I mean, I mean, I always say that Delgado's my favorite master, but Sasha Dolan really was the master. Where he was unpredictable. He didn't know what he was going to do, and. Yeah, he was pretty much the Doctor's opposite. I don't know. I like him. I like the kind of slightly mad master. I like the calculating master. I like the fact that the master is just gradually more descending into madness as time goes on, which kind of makes sense with the whole character of the master. It made me really uncomfortable how, how like, bad crazy the master's got. Because he's always been bad crazy, but he's literally slaughtered all the time, Lord, after we've spent so many years trying to get them back again, or the Doctor has, and then he's massacred everyone and kept their bodies in a fridge. What the I liked how furious the Master was at the fact that he had any part of the Doctor inside him. That felt like this Master. That, yes, I can see why he would kill a planet over that. Uh, that I mean, that's the fury of the Time Lords. I really want to know where Sasha Dewan's master fits into the master's timeline. Yeah. Because oh, my favourite master is Michelle Gomez, actually. Um, but I partly thought that there'd been some development there. And I'm curious where this master comes into it all. I really hope that the Messi is the last one. Yeah. Well, we saw Anthony Ailey burn alive in Planet of Fire, and he still came back as a cat in, in survival. Yeah. So. But it's more about the same master. When we when he shows up, I'll be happy. It's like he's oh, he's freaking me out, he's great. but he's great. He's absolutely brilliant, and I, I see shades of other masters in him, particularly John Sim actually. But well, John Sim of course sort of decimated the human race. So bit rude. When I say John Sim, John Sim, master, John Sim personally committed genocide <laughs> against the human race. Oh, I love Sasha as a master. Though I'm a little bit annoyed that for the third time in a row now, let the Cybermen be sidelined to the master in the finale. Again, the third time in a row. And like, I love Cybermen, I love the master, but it's like the third time it's happened now. Yes. Like, come on. I hated the floating Cybermen heads. Yeah, I thought they were a bit silly. Somehow, their attempts at the Cybermen were worse shots than the Stormtroopers. Does that mean that's just brains shooting at you? I didn't really get it. I definitely got some Earthshock vibes with the with the Cybermen's 1980s esque design and just how there were there was groups of them marching towards the corridor. Why why do cyber ships have life support? They don't need it. They're all cased in their own spacesuits. To the extent they're alive at all, why do they have life support? The two episodes felt very, very fan fury. Fan wanky. Especially the Cybermen <laughs> Time Lords. The Cybermen with their Time Lord things look stupid as f- <laughs> <laughs> That was something that someone on DeviantArt would create. There was a like, you get like crossover, oh, mainly Disney no, crossovers with like other no, things, no, but you get like Doctor Who crossovers with other stuff, and this felt like a crossover that a person decided to stop. I mean, everyone thinks the, the Cyber Lords, like the Cyber Time Lords, were kind of weird looking. I thought they were, I thought I they were fine. I loved them. I also, them cool. So now the hybrid makes sense now. The hybrid they were talking about in Series 9, it was the Cyber Time Lords. It all makes sense again. Hell Bent is now l- less less bad. DeviantArt, like a really bad DeviantArt, like really bad 
like fan art. I thought they were great. I, they were like, I really like, we'll agree to disagree on that one, but I think they look great. I mean, I quite like Decybermen in this episode. And, and, I'd still prove to be a a threatening villain. He was, he's been like one of the best villains we've had in Doctor Who for a very long time. It's very difficult to give a Cyberman a personality because they're essentially designed to be emotionless. Yeah. But if you had a, just a little tweak of part of the story that his emotional inhibitor doesn't work, yeah. and he's actually he's terrifying because he's full of vitriol and hatred. The woman, I can't remember her name, she's like, like, we are running from the Cyberman that makes Cybermen Men scream. scream. And that just resonated and I was like, oh my god. Like, how terrifying is that? That they're making one of those terrifying beings that have basically killed all humanity uh -huh. and this guy can make them scream. It's like, how do, you, how do you run from that? Apparently, by turning him into a toy soldier. I like that the angriest Cyberman went out like a punk because I've never liked the character. I like he just died like that. Go away. I thought a shard was killed off in a bit of an anticlimactic way. I mean, yeah. for, a vil for a villain built up like a shard and very proved to be quite a threat, the way he was killed off, I was like, is that it? Just this, no plot. I hated that. Oh, well, the, the that. tissue He's compression like eliminator. The oh. big villain for like, what, basically two and a half episodes, a good, cause technically he's the villain, the Shelly one, and then this part one, and then part three is about halfway through. And I'm like, that. And you're, 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 you're this size, you're that thing you step on in your bedroom in the middle of the dark. But I love how, when it, when it, doing like the whole, whole montage scene with a flashback when Jodie's like going through her head to try and break the Matrix, they actually, of all the clips they could have chosen, they include the Absorber Loft in that montage. The Absorber Loft, they, cho they purposely chose the Absorber Loft. It is one of the rock guys that's along with them. I'm going to call them. The Serene? Because I need ideas. Yeah, because he's from, from Clom, isn't he? That's a, that's a twin planet of Axe Cocker Fat Victorious. A horrible creature to pay them, I hated them. Peter Kay's finest moment, I think we can all agree. Basically, there was the three founders of Gallifrey. You had Rassel and Omega and the... Hello, oh, you! Yeah. Hello. Don't Hi. forget to click below and subscribe to the official Doctor Who Glasgow <laughs> YouTube channel. <laughs>